Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Crime Centric. This being a show where I talk about TV shows that are crime dramas. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about The Blacklist, Season 10, Episode 17. Great episode, a lot of really interesting things went down in this episode, so let's break it down. So, very interesting Blacklister this uh, uh, week. We have uh, Red uh, um, bringing the Morgana Logistic Corporation to Harold's. Uh, view and so it turns out that this is a m large corporation that basically makes companies seem legitimate while also like handling like like um illicit shipping and all this stuff like this is like an extensive extensive uh corporation to the point that they backdate everything they come they fake everything they fake um well, God, everything. Like, oh, here's some birth certificates from, from people who don't exist. We pay our taxes. They do everything they can to seem as legitimate as possible. And they have their hands in so many corporations. I mean, when the, the task force really breaks it down, they're like, okay, so we thought maybe like there'd be a few hundred corporations. Like, no, there's thousands, if not tens of thousands of corporations that don't exist i mean they've they've made like because even the way sia talked about it, it's like oh it's like one of the, like the particular company they first go after it's supposed to be like a tech company or something see it's like the executives on their website or whatever aren't real people they're amalgamations of pieces from other people real people's faces so it's not even like because it's it's even better than stock footage it's ai generated which obviously i mean very pertinent timing obviously what ai does it it takes pieces of already existing stuff and amalgamate it into something but it's like yeah like stock footage would be too easy to track but if you're getting something that can piece together pieces from other people you won't be able to immediately pick up like hey this is this this is a picture of this person well that's a real person so you know so because there are going to be real people and then there are fake people mixed in, but they're all carefully, like, all these details are carefully handled for them. So, obviously, we meet one person in this episode. Later on, they just call him Mr. Cavanaugh, but he has so many names that he was kind of worried because he's like, all right, the FBI's on to us. They ended up hitting um, one of our shipment containers because one of them ended up being, like, some very expensive wine. When now, in retrospect, like, running through everything, you're like, man, the pieces were already there. I guess you could say, like, the way the A and B plot ended up flowing, flowing, like flowing together. I'd still consider like the, that red side of things, like the B plot, and then like the Arthur stuff, the C plot, which we'll get to later. But yeah, it's like every time they get enough, but not en enough. I, I'm, I'm saying that in the most weird way that they are they end up hitting one of the spots later on, which is kind of a hub for the Morgana Logistic Corporation, but the only person there was like one like one of the executive people. And it's like, right, where are the rest of the employees? He let them go ahead of time because he didn't want them. Because he's like, oh yeah, like the main guy, uh, main head honcho of all this, he's in town, he wants a meeting with me. I don't know what that's going to mean. It's like, because even you could tell the guy was kind of nervous. Like, is he going to end up killing me? Like, did I, because I screwed the pooch and the FBI found out about us. So I was like, are we going to meet this illustrious um Head Hunter, which we do, but like I said, we'll get to that soon enough. But I thought that was just how that was all played. And like I said, like in retrospect, it feels like the groundwork was already there where you could see the twist coming. And it's just like, I should have seen it. It just, it took me too long to figure out what was kind of going on, like I said, with the A and B plot. But um, especially because the Kavanaugh dude was like, not worried because it's like run as prints, you can't find anything. Red uh, reached out to some sources and found out this guy's got identities in so many different countries. Red even said something interesting. It's like, well, no, if you look at my circumstances, I could pull out a valid identification for most countries out there, if mo most, if not all countries out there in the world, just because I've got the people that allow me to do that. But it's like that should have been the key factor in all of this. Um, because the guy was like super not worried, but he was also because he's like, right, you want to send me to central booking? Fine. Um, it's like you're more scared of turning on your ball, so you're not willing to say anything. He's like, right, this is the the rigmarole. All right, you're you're an FBI agent. I know how you agents work. You wanna you wanna uh, go for the small fish, so you can go after the bigger fish. So you're trying to cut me a deal. He's just like, right, go ahead and send me to booking. So they couldn't find anything, but Red's the one to who found everything. But I guess it's also befitting that it would be Red who would have all this information about all these different aliases. I wonder, did he actually have to look around or did he already go like, yeah, I've already got all this. So like, let me just like, because that's what I'm wondering, like, 
this must be so okay. I'm jumping around a lot. I'm I'm fishing, jumping around it. But I I I sh I'm trying to figure out when I figured it out. But it took a while. It's not like because Red wanted to meet the guy, and I was like, "You're gonna play pay his um, um like large amount of bail, uh, Mr. Kavanaugh, or whatever." And that ties into Red wanting to throw a party. My initial thought was, "Oh, Red's throwing a party for the task force." But it's like, no. He said 25 to 30 people. Why would he? It's like, no. Like even if there's that many people on the task force, like obviously he he would keep it the close circle that it is of the group. So I'm like, why would he invite that many people? And then all those people are there. I was like. It's your corporation. This corporation is the backbone to his entire criminal. I mean, maybe one of many backbones. Maybe it's one of many foundational pillars to his corporate to his uh, criminal enterprise. I was like, you're burning it to the ground. I was like, interesting, because he made sure like any important like the only people like even with like all the arrests that have been happening internationally. Because, like, Paris is the main hub. They ended up going there. Like, a lot of the, the place, the, the servers and stuff were still warm, so they had just left. There had been some arrest around the world, but it only been, like, lower-level employees. I mean, in the grand scheme of things, it works out for the task force because, like, yeah, we might not have had any arrests, but we still had the work to show that we took down a corporation that has, like, been all over the place internationally. But Paris was kind of, like, the main hub, and they had different hubs around uh, the world and stuff, so, but only, like, lower level employees got, um, taking care, of, and all the executive, like, the higher up people are going, like, because hey, it's like, how is it that they knew we were coming, it's because Red tipped them all off, so they knew that FBI was coming, because he's willing to sacrifice, because Red is burning his entire criminal enterprise, his, like, he's, like, returning all the favors, there was the guy, the, the, uh, oh, God, I'm blanking on his name. He's the guy who has like the connection with all the um, maids and everything that works in hotels. That guy, Red tried to help him out early in the season, but he's like, no, no, I've got a big enough nest egg because of what you do, and I'm building out my operation. And Red's like, oh, like, congratulations, because Red was even staying at his place for like a day or two. That it's Red is trying to pay off every favor. He's also like trying to put himself in a position where he's severing connections with everyone so that whenever his situation falls apart, no one connected to him falls. Like anyone that's been loyal to him all these years, he's paying them out. Like these executives, it's like, right, this beautiful thing we made is coming to an end because he even told Andrea about the party. He's like, yeah, this is going to be the celebration of beginnings and ends. You know, spring is coming. And I'm like, because this thing, like, he wanted to make sure all these executives were taken care of. Even kind of making it imply, like, hey, the employees that got arrested or whatever, they're getting taken care of, too. Like, everyone's going to walk away okay. Yes, the, the the thing that we've built, something spectacular we've built, is, is gone now. But, you know, it, you know, you guys will never have to work a day in your lives. Like, he's taking care of everyone. Um, it's just like the, 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 the um, the backbone of what this was, the Morgana Logistic Corporation is gone. And I don't think Cooper and them are that of, of the wiser of it. And that's why I'm curious, like, was this something that even Dembe wasn't aware of? I mean, he was out of like, he wasn't investigating all of this. So, but I'm, that's why I'm, I think it's so interesting because I don't, because I was about to say out of anyone, Dembe would know about this. Like he knows this is something that's been going for years. So Dembe would know about this like because he knew all of like Red's connections and stuff. So now I mean, part of me wonders, is that also why he didn't want Dembe like uh, that? I mean, for one, he wanted to spend time with Dembe, but it also made it easier to cover up what he was doing because Dembe would be able to figure out, wait, the Morgana. And that's what because he was kind of probably kept out of the loop of this investigation. It's like, hey, focus on protecting Red. But it's like, yeah, he wanted Dembe out of the office so this could all go down because Dembe will probably later on be like, wait, you, you took that the Morgana Corporation? It's like, yeah, that's the blacklisters we got. That's the foundation of Red's. It's like, wait, what? Red sacrificed his, for what purpose? You know, because everyone's already worried about him because they're just like, something's off with Red. He just, he doesn't seem him, like, he, he seems himself, but he's so cavalier about everything, but it's like, there's something going on. So, but like I said, just raising everything to the ground, but also not burning the people, burning the institutions and the corporations, the things that they, like, have been a part of. But, like I said, he's just severing all connections and ties to himself. And I'm assuming that ties into the C-plot with Arthur. So, either way, uh, kind of, uh, 
I just thought that was so, be like I said, beautifully dumb, just connecting, like, like I said, the A and B plot in that regard, and also potentially connecting that, obviously, to the C plot. Once again, he I think he did that to get Dembe out of the way, but also he wanted to spend time with Dembe. I love that it's like, because Red set this all in motion, because it's like, for one, he's like, oh yeah, I had a break-in. It's like, who was it? And he's like, oh, don't worry about it. And he was in, in the innuendos. He was like, yeah, I ended up on top. It's like, shut up, Red. She's like, you need, because Weisho was like, you need a bodyguard. He's like, I need a girlfriend. She's like, oh, kind of good luck with that, you know? And I even love Dimbe. He was like, you got three guesses, and if you get it wrong, Dimbe, you drop it. And it's like, was it this person? He's like, no. Was it this person? No. And in reference was one person, he's like, what? Why would she even be still mad? I don't even remember what I actually did to that person. So, it's like, no, Red, you definitely remember what you did. So, I guess a jilted ex-lover or something. Uh, the, one of the people he referenced, the, the one the, uh, Red was kind of like, what? No. Uh, but it's like, finally he gave it, it was like, it was Weech's, like, why'd you make it seem like to Harold it was someone else? He's like, I don't know what Weech's intentions are, and stuff like that, playing so coy. He's like, I, I love it. Um, but for Red, he was like, yeah, I, I could tell Harold was worried about me, so I saw an opportunity, plus I wanted to spend some time with you, Dimbe. I even love it. It's like, I love where they were talking on the phone, Dimbe was giving her, he said, no, you should go this way. He's like, no, this would be faster. He's like, you just started driving yourself around. How would you know what's faster? And it's like, see, no traffic. And it's just like, they had a great meal and everything, and I just love Dimbe's final words to him, be like, I miss you too, Red. And I, th it was just, it was just kind of nice because he had brought it up before. It's like, no, we, we should spend time together because whatever is happening, whatever's coming, whatever Red has planned dissolving everything, he knows that he won't be able to hang out with Dembe. This is the end and maybe not just the more infrastructure of his enterprise but maybe once again either red is sick and he knows he's dying he was sick before like not less he knows he doesn't have that much time left or whether he's going out in a blaze of glory like you know not equating it as a blaze of glory but my thought has always been like and i, I brought this up last i believe last episode too of how red story going is, is it going to end is it going to be a Walter White situation, but maybe it's going to be a fake out like Walter White thing of like, hey, I'm dead and everyone's going to think I'm dead. But maybe we kind of have like a little bit of a Dark Knight Rises where Alfred sees um, Bruce um, again at the very end. So maybe it's going to be something like that where maybe like Dembe or Harold or someone sees. I'd even I would brought it up too. like I could definitely see this series finale being like the ending being the time skip of like Agnes becoming an FBI agent or something like that. Or maybe it's just her older with a family of her own or something. And maybe you get to see Pinky one last time, like keeping an eye on her type of thing. Who knows? But that's why he's also like doting over uh, Agnes so much, you know? And leaving her like all these things like he got these like uh, specifically like uh, when they like uh, these like ballet shoes like he got them like custom made for her and stuff like that. So he's trying to spoil her, you know, as any grandparent would, you know, before the end, I think. I mean, just in general, but also because uh, I also wasn't able to kind of really spoil Liz this way. So I think it's almost kind of compensation in that regard. So I'm just. I'm just so curious next episode of that conversation is going to come up. Like, and then once it, maybe this is something Dimby had no idea about, but I feel like it's too big and it's too important to Red's organization for it not to be something Dimbe knew about. It ain't like this is something that popped up recently. Like, this is something that's been in the works for years and years and years. It's been a foundational part of his organization, I'm sure. So it has to be a thing of like Dembe knows. So when the conversation comes up, like I, I hope that is a conversation we get next episode of like, wait, this is what you took now? Yeah, that's connected to Red. It's like, wait, it's like is that why Red also had me not in the office like investigating this because of that? So it's definitely gonna be interesting to see. But getting to the C plot Arthur, like, they thought, like, hey, we dealt with this Arthur thing, but it's like, no, Blair gave him a starting point, but he got an even different starting point in this episode. So, okay. 
So Arthur ends up bringing in one of his buddies that he hopes like, hey, like a lot. I can't. I've got to keep this circle small about who I talk to about it. I mean, Dorf was gotten to last episode. I need to make sure whoever I bring in doesn't kind of falter on the way to this. But it's like obviously this is so tight lipped that his buddy. It's like, dude. I've seen black ops, black ops stuff with more transparency that isn't nearly as opaque as this because this is this is some deep level like you can't find nothing. There are so many top level people who don't even know what this task force is and what it does. So once again, this is about transparency. This is about trying to find out if there's some illicit criminal stuff at foot here and and that's the complicated thing because you're like no the task force does good work but then at the same time you can't deny but man has read profited and benefited from this a lot because it's like it's one thing if like hey you're using him as a criminal informant he also has gotten so much leeway with all the like i said the the way he's benefited the the allies he's gained from it uh the people he's killed along the way the trail of bodies that red has left in his wake across this entire show it's like you can't like completely you know the task force is in this weird gray area but you know author's all about kind of like you know things things being so black and white you know it's like there's good and there's bad the task force exists in that gray area and they've all kind of that's been something wrestlers kind of dealt with that's what uh, Harold is kind of dealt with in that gray. I mean, obviously, Sia's definitely dabbled in the gray, especially learning about what her mom did in the past just to kind of protect the family she had to do. I mean, she didn't directly do anything. She indirectly got her partner killed, but, I mean, didn't get him killed, just kind of let him die. So... So she's dabbled in the gray. She's seen the gray in this in, in this world of everything being like everything isn't just so clear cut black and white, good and evil. There are so many complicated shades of gray in the task. Like I said, the task force falls into that category. So. But Arthur's not going to look at it that way. He definitely doesn't look at it that way. I mean, obviously, he still he has the outside perspective. I think that's so interesting because. Once again, this isn't the first time the task force has felt some heat, but this is probably the closest anyone of this nature and ilk has kind of come this close. I mean, once again, we've had like, we've had Red on trial before. We had, um, like everything about this, um, task force kind of being exposed and stuff beforehand, like on like a courtroom level and stuff like that. But this is kind of different because Arthur is the type of person who wants to shout it to the world. So everything that kind of went down in that courtroom kind of stayed hush hush. Um, if I remember correctly, it's been a couple of years, but yeah, like Arthur's going to take whatever he can find and shout it to the world. And everyone, including Panda Baker, including Cooper will take the fall for it. Like when it's, when it's all said and done. And so, um, he ends up finding out about there being some meeting between four, um, high ranking like FBI pe people who were basically in Harold's position, him and three other people met for some court thing. And I'm like, what was that about? I was like, is that something in the show we should know about? And he goes and Arthur plays, uh, he tricks one of the, the, th uh, one of the four people involved because he wasn't going to go to Cooper because Cooper, he knew Cooper might be too tight lipped, especially like you've gone bent over backwards to like really like protect this 836 thing. Like you wouldn't let anything slip. Someone who's connected but disconnected maybe isn't completely aware of everything that they're involved in. Like, um, he played the guy being like, hey, I have this trend. Like, he alluded that, hey, I have this transcript, and I just want to get your side of things before I kind of bring it to the surface. And the guy was like, if you even utter the word Zuma, I was like, you gave him the ammunition. You gave him a starting point. The guy even looks through the files, and he ain't seen them. I'm like, first and foremost, why are you not contacting Harold immediately? Harold didn't get a call from that guy this episode. So it's like, damn it. He's on a fishing expedition, and you gave him what he needed he needed a starting point so and that was the that was the the straw that broke the camel's back because that's where the floodgates opened because the the case or whatever the thing they went to not even in the case the thing they went to court for with these like four like fbi people it was getting dimbe um into the fbi like maybe that's something that came up like at like in season nine when we got that recap on uh dimbe's history like maybe this would have um maybe that would have came up then and I just don't remember like that whole thing last season because we got an episode like that showed us flashbacks of when Dembe like the circumstances that led him leaving um kind of basically running 
um, Red's organization when he was gone to him becoming an FBI agent. So now that and that all connects to a photo from a couple years back that was ran in the newspaper, which ties into that photographer that was working for Wu Jing, who took the picture of Red all those years ago. And he said, like, hey, I got this picture of the back of Raymond Reddington's face, but no one believed me on well, that photo is also the photo of Demi. So it's like that was introduced this season. And now it's also coming back. I was like, oh, dude. So it's like, hey, I believe this is Red. And he starts connecting all the dots about okay, this is uh, Red, here's Dembe, oh, um, Elizabeth King went on the run with uh, Reddington, obviously at the end of season two, but majority of season three. I feel like it was like a majority of season three they were on the run together, a good chunk of, not like a little over half, one and half of the season, if not more, that they were on the run together. Um, also that Harold adopted Liz's daughter, then also Claire, not to say Claire, Blair gave him, gave her, cause I don't, she probably like, cause wrestlers, the one part of that organ, um, of the task force, she investigated, well, one of the agents that was a bit, so I guess maybe she couldn't find anything enough on Sia, maybe cause Sia didn't have a deep enough history with the FBI or whatever, but wrestler was her in and she gave that to Arthur um, so I, that's why I'm wondering where we're going to get any more Blair or is that just the only time we're going to get Blair for, I mean, we only got it like what, f five episodes. Yeah. Five episodes left. So Blair might not make another appearance. That might be her only, like, that's her final contribution that the kind of like, that was kind of her way to kind of stick it to the task force for kind of burning her organ, burning her to some extent. They couldn't completely take her down, but they still made her kind of have to give up some of her own leverage in certain regards of what she kind of fixed and cleaned up for other people. So, But Arthur's perspective on this is, A, that all these things lead back to Raymond Reddington and he's co he's... He's corrupted a an FBI agency. He's this task force. And it's like, I'm not going to stop until basically he's going for the juggler. He's going to rip this thing apart. So it's like, right. So they, and especially wrestler was like, oh yeah, glad that dwarf and um, Hudson thing is dealt with. It's like, nope, Hudson has not given up and he's doing everything he can. And that's also the thing. Red was like, oh, let me look into this guy. Oh, the guys actually stand up, you know, so I'm not going to. Go for the threatening fame. That's why I'm like, I think Reddit's dismantling everything because obviously the deal and every uh, every tie to the task force is removed from their systems. And also, once again, Red is doing everything to kind of essentially gut his own organization. No one on, on the inside, the wiser about him being the one responsible for that. But that's why I'm like, I guess he's waiting so that when Hudson tries to come after everyone he cares about, everything he's built. It's like there's nothing there. All you will find are the skeletal, maybe even then you might not even find the skeletal remains because the flesh has already been eaten by all the maggots and worms because, yeah, it's it's already gone and buried and uh, there's nothing for you to find. How that all plays out, I don't know. Like I said, we got five episodes to see this all continue out, but what other elements is Red going to start dismantling and dissolving in his organization? Um, as he's kind of setting up his exit from the stage and in what capacity will he be exiting the stage? We'll ultimately have to wait and see how this all plays out, especially with this Weech's stuff, like having it's like finally coming up again at the very end of the ser season, at the very end of the series. And I'm like, okay, so how is it? That's them. I was like, that's going to be interesting. That's going to be interesting to see. So. We'll ultimately have to wait to see where the next episode takes us going forward with all of this. But really, that's all I wanted to talk about. To the next time we meet, be happy, be safe, live life to the fullest, and enjoy it. Good day and good